<laughs> well, welcome back, my fantastic friends, to what will be the very last time we'll be painting on the Treasures channel. So do go over and uh, check out my second channel, which is going to be purely for painting, and we'll stick to coins on this one on the Treasures channel. Now, um, this this sort of project of me painting for you guys is is been like some sort of uh, uh, it happened by default. I was all into making coin videos and. Well, I didn't even want to do that. I, I, I kind of got browbeaten into doing that, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And, and, you know, I still thoroughly enjoy that. But, but word got out that I could paint a little bit. You know, I, I sent a certain somebody, Mr. Collex, Mr. Christopher Collex, a painting, and then word got out that I could paint. They'd like to see that on YouTube, so I started doing that, and and then we've come to some sort of divide, some some sort of like pathway, you know, within the channel, and. You know, it is a bit of an heavy heart that I'm having to split the channel up, but I think it's going to benefit both entities, both Coin Collective and uh, and obviously the artwork. And I want to thank every single one of you that that has supported me through this this little project for the last 18 months or so. And uh, it it really has been fun, and it's going to be even funner. You know, we're going to have even more happy days. But anyway, let's get off that subject. You, you know. Um, it, it can well you up, you know, sometimes. But what we've got up here, right, so the very first painting that I did on the channel was uh, a little one called Throwing Some Paint at a Canvas. It was a little tiny canvas, probably about a foot by eight inch. Now this is a big one, it's like a 20 odd inch by 18 inch canvas. And uh, we're gonna replicate that one. I thought, well, since we started on that one, we'll end on that kind of painting. It's got a nice mountain in there, a beautiful looking sky, and if all goes well, We'll have some trees, so so the usual master temple stuff up there. But again, yep, yeah, let's take a tiny little brush, big two inch brush, and I'm just gonna hit some yellow. I don't know if you can see that there, but I'm just gonna pull that out. This is just cad yellow, and just tap straight in there. Okay, now this canvas has been coated with liquid white, so it's all slick, it's all wet. We can blend color up here, instead of working the sands to death down on this palette. Right, so slightly above halfway, and slightly off to one side, I'm gonna go in with this yellow. And I'm just gonna feather that out, blend that out, just like so. Okay, just like that. Okay, we'll add some water. If I remember rightly, we had some water down here, so we'll just wipe the rest of it off. Okay, just down here. And then I'm gonna take a tiny bit of the Indian yellow and mix that, the Indian yellow and the yellow ochre together lovely goldy colors and just above this whoop lost a the hair there that happens that happens just flick him off okay and we'll put some of this goldy color this goldy yellow around there and again we'll have some of that down here in the water or water okay course if you're not known by now I'm from Yorkshire so you know we may need the subtitles on all right so a bit of alizarin and crimson I still haven't cleaned the brush yet a little bit of alizarin and crimson and we're gonna go up here and again just around like that just a bit up here feather that in wave it in crisscross it in any old out okay now keep the brush moving. I keep the brush moving as I'm painting because if you just do, you know, you know, big swirls like this, it's going to be hard to blend that out. Um, we want to be able to blend colour up here rather, rather than working as sense to death. Let's make life easy for ourselves, yeah. Okay, a bit of crimson in there. Of course, that'll mix with the liquid white. It'll give us a beautiful pinky glow to the water and the sky okay right a little bit more uh, just wipe the brush across the paper towel and then we'll have a little bit of phthalo blue in these corners just up here now we don't want the phthalo blue to touch the yellow or we'll get a green sky but I think one of my comments was on the original video, we don't mind a bit of greenery down in the water. So we'll just add some of this. So we'll just pull that in from the side, just like that. 
and again from the other side. We'll just pull from the side like that, and that automatically will leave a light part in the centre, and that'll look like a sheen of light going across the water. Now I'm just going to take a tiny bit of Prussian blue just for the corner. Now Prussian blue is a lot stronger and a lot darker than the uh, than the phthalo blue. So blue I like to use, especially on cold winter paintings. And there we go. Just like that. Right. I'm going to wash the brush off now. While I wash the brush off now, I'm going to put the original painting up, okay? And see if you can uh, have a little bit of a gather what we're, we're trying to achieve. So just wash the brush. Odorless painting, it's got to be odorless because it's got to be odorless because we're in an enclosed space. We don't want to be smelling, you know, this place out. There we go. Yeah, so that's the original painting gone up. That's what we did. I think I gave that away actually in a 250 subscriber giveaway. Who knows, on the new channel I may give this one away. All right, so tap a tiny bit of white paint into the brush and I'm just going to feather this out right there. I want a real buzz of a light spot. And then I'm going to work it out. Work it out, really get tough. Really get tough. Start blending these colours. So work from the, the yellows to the crimsons and right the way into the blues. But do not take a dirty brush back into the uh, back into the centre. There, like so. So what we'll do one more time, just wash the brush off. I have the wash can right down there. And I just shake it off and just beat the brush against the leg of the wall mounted easel. Okay, so that's that. That's the sky. Okay, and we can even go across the water a little bit just to bring this together. Just to blend all this together. Maybe even put a bit of white in there. Just like that. Happy days, happy days. So this is Boxing Day, all being well, this is Boxing Day. It's, it's not quite Christmas yet for me as I'm recording this. It's, um, well, I think it's actually the second, I think, second or third of December. So it's not quite, not quite there, but I am wearing my Christmas jumper from the said man, Christopher Galex. And uh, yeah, so, I hope you had a very, very Merry Christmas. I know, uh, I know I'm hoping for some good things, but as you're watching this, Christmas will have been gone Boxing Day. Okay, right, I'm gonna add a cloud into this. Now, I can't remember if I put a cloud on the original one or not, but um, you'll know, because you'll have seen the original picture, but I think we can do a cloud. So all I'm gonna do is just tap into one corner, just some titanium wire. So you pull it out and tap. Okay, and the majority of the paint is in the corner. And all I'm gonna do is just tap back up here. Wherever we think a large cloud will live. That's exactly where we're gonna put it. And all we need to do is just tap. There. Just like that. There, you can hear the canvas rattling against the easel. Don't worry about that. Right, we're going to take another brush, which is dry, and we're just going to clean and dry, hit the base of that, and then just blend that out, and then just lightly go up, and then lightly across, from side to side, just very gently, just take out those tap marks. Right, back to the brush with the paint on it, so the white paint. And now we can put another one in front of this. You need to blend that layer out, you see. So we can put this in there. Like that. We may even creep this one there like so. Who knows where these big clouds live? They're so free. Like that. There. Okay. Just get rid of that hair. Right, so again, 
knock the brush hairs against uh, something firm and then we can just tap the base of this. Now if you wish you can get a tiny bit of crimson and just tap that into the base of the clouds as well. That'll look like some some shadows that have been there. You can do that with blues, make a purple colour. I'm fond of Winton and Newt uh, Windsor and Newton's Winton colours, the uh, and I've got magenta, in fact I've got them down there on the bottom of the palette for another painting that I'm going to be doing quite soon which strangely enough will go up before this one which is weird I'm, wa I'm just waiting for the canvas to dry and you, you'll have seen that one by now already <laughs> Welcome to the world of the master very chaotic back to front, upside down, side to side but it's alright, I'm an artist people expect that of artists don't they? <laughs> okay so we'll just blend it all that out all right let's get on to the start of the show in this one okay so let's take a palette knife i have asked santa claus to fetch me a new palette knife so hopefully hopefully i'll get one but you'll be seeing this after christmas day so yeah i don't know right so black paint I'm going to take some black I'm going to take some brown I'm going to take some crimson I'm going to throw some blue in there as well and I'm going to maybe even a touch of sap green green and crimson make a beautiful brown color and if you ever want to make your own black paint if you use phthalo green and it and crimson in about equal proportions you can make black paint Okay, there we go. So it does look black on the car, uh, on the palette. So if you want to check what colour that is, okay, just pull some out, get a bit of white paint and mix it in there. Now that looks like a really deep grey blue colour, and that's exactly what I want for this kind of painting. Okay, so pull it out really flat, really bend the knife, get a roll of paint, and then up here we're going to come in and we're going to create a nice mountain. So we're going to start there work his way down I think I had three peaks on the original one so we'll, we'll do something like that so we'll work down so they pop what's on the in turn inside that line this top line is what we're after nothing else just just that top edge and we come down like that scrape off the excess maybe give him another Mountainy friend there. Yeah, like that. Just like so. Get in there, scrape all the excess paint off. Like that. Okay, wipe the knife on a paper towel. Get a big brush. This is just a brush that we use to blend the sky. And we're just going to grab that and pull down. Try not to touch that nice top edge you've created. But if that happens, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it one little bit. All you need to do is re-straighten it with your knife. Okay, now we're just gonna come down here. Because we've got liquid white on the canvas, we can pull this paint. And think about the direction of mounting lives. There, like that. Just pull it out and then just blend it into nothing, okay? And even just with brush strokes, you can start to set up. You can start to set up your, your highlight side of the mountain, just like that. There we go. And probably blend that into nothing. There. So I think we have some footles down here or you know, rolling hills, whatever they want. Just like that. Okay, again, we can just hit the brush because we've barely got any paint on it. We can just hit it against something firm and uh, and really clean it that way. Right, again, same. So we clean the knife, obviously, and then we pull the white paint out and we're just scraping a nice little roll of paint. It was right there on the edge. And we're gonna come in here now I like to paint highlights coming from the right hand side, but if you want to paint highlights coming from the 
left hand side. You do that, you know, you can do anything on your canvas. Okay, it's just my preference. Okay, so very lightly, hardly touching the canvas and I'm just gonna swoosh in some snow, some highlights. Just there, like that. Very gently. Very gently. Okay, yes, pull that white paint out. Coming in, but you need that dark colour underneath just to show some of these highlights up. You need the dark times for them to show their good times, don't you? If your life was just one big good time, you would not know. You would not know it was a good time, would you? You definitely need the dark to show the light. Just like so. And sometimes it's fun just to change the flavour of this white paint. Put a bit of brown in there, a bit of grey perhaps. And that'll give that'll give the indication of stones. Put that in there. Okay. Again we'll put a little highlight on this one. Maybe he's catching the light, catching some some sunshine, some rays. Okay, now we're going to mix some white paint, tiny bit, just a tiny bit, phthalo blue. Mix that together, just like that. Then pull it out, cut off our roll of paint, and let's work on some shadows. Now, blue is a very cool colour. very cool colour so you can uh, so that's why it works good in shadows can you just blend that down there like that again try and be gentle try and be light you don't want to be plastering on like you're icing a cake just come in there and push this one back I want to know if any of you coin collecting guys actually do paint or actually into this. I have a few painting friends and I don't know why but they're reluctant to comment sometimes but uh, maybe on the new channel they'll uh, feel more at home. Well, I want to know if uh, any of you guys, you painters, uh, you uh, coin collectors, my numismatic friends actually get, get an urge while you're watching this to just do a bit of a painting. If you lose yourself in a painting, it really is a magnificent feeling. It really is. There's nothing no freer than just working on this canvas. You know, like so. I, yeah. And, uh, don't worry about some of these. We'll come back and readjust the uh, the highlights as we need to that comes down there like so add a bit of the blue in there okay wipe the knife off wipe the knife off try not to wipe it through some paint get some white paint and then I'm just gonna come in here and just reaffirm this edge and maybe it goes down there like that I don't like to see straight edges on a mountain that I mean I have painted straight edges in the past but I, I, I kind of like I, I like them a bit zigzaggy and I have a bit of character and a bit gnarly gnarly looking like that yeah. in fact we could pull this one just down like that no. maybe it comes round any way we want. Any way we want. There and up there. There. So I hope I hope you guys are joining me on my second channel. Um, <laughs> I am still a bit reluctant to name the channel yet because I'm, I'm, I'm 
I'm still in a couple of different minds. Master Temple paints, or painting with Master Temple, or Master Temple arts, or, or, or you know, painting with a master. I don't know. I don't know. The name that I, I've put up on the channel at the moment, possibly just a working name. We don't really want to go over fiddle this this mountain. Put some light paint just down there. We don't want to really fiddle it up away. So that looks about right to me. Again, when you've got unlimited time, you can spend hours doing this. You really could. You can use all the equipment. Make all sorts of lovely, lovely mountainy shapes right stop piddling with it down you'll end up making a big pile of mud and that's not what we want okay dry brush clean dry brush okay let's beat the bottom of this mountain okay and all we're going to do is work those angles work those angles up the side of the mountain beat it like you're beating a drum okay and then just gently up just very gently now this works because the paint i'm using it's very firm. On one of my on one of my videos, I painted a uh, I painted a uh, a painting just using um, pound shop um, paints, <laughs> you, you know, or, or or something like that. And we got a good painting out of it. it. wasn't too bad. However, the paint that you need to use should be quite firm for this technique you put a lot of wet paint on there you know the liquid white but that's the only microscopic amount we don't hardly put any liquid white on there okay let's just blend that away i'm just going to grab the knife again and just pull some of this white paint down a little bit more there like that so it's just breaching the mist you need this nice misty area down there just like that there we go maybe a bit more on the shadow side just there wow that is some mountain isn't it i would absolutely love to go see these mountains in real life i've been to canada lovely lovely place i have family over in canada and if you're watching hi guys um but yeah, and they have some of these mountain ranges, as they do in America and the Alps, yeah, Switzerland, it's good stuff. Right, there we go, right, so that's that done. Now we need to work on something in the mid-ground. So let me take a fan brush. I am going to get a number six fan brush, and I'm going to take a, I can't remember what colour there was in the original, but we'll, we'll just use blue, and we'll use white. We was blue and white, just like we did for the uh, the shadow of the mountain. Okay, now all I'm going to do is just, because it's curved, if we just touch, we get a curvy sort of a effect. Okay, now we're just going to come along like this, and all I want you to do when you're doing this is just think of rolling hills. Okay. We know we had a tree here, so we're not too fussed about that. Back in the early days, I had a, a, a Galaxy camera, a uh, Samsung Galaxy camera, and it had a memory cap. And the issue we had with it um, was we only had like 25 minutes to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to do a full video in, and there was no editing back then. Well, not editing as such, it was just raw. There you go, get on, you're painting, that's it. And then when you've done, you've got to have done a full picture in 25 minutes. That takes some doing, that really does take some doing. But um, now we can have longer videos, we can edit. I don't edit them as much now, I used to do, I used to edit them out, you know, a lot. But um, now I, th I think it's good just doing it live, all in one go, painted as you see it. You see it happen in, in front of you, um, and there's no trickery involved, it's just, just 
owes some pay a cat listener a couple of little tiny brushes and the desire to achieve that's the main thing you must have the desire to achieve to create you don't have that desire then it's going to be pretty hard to do anything okay so again i'm just blending out the bottom of that hill just like that and again we can just fade that into nothing what you can do is just give this hill a little tiny upward lift. So I don't know if you can see that, it's very faint. I mean, I can see it, but I'm right on top of the canvas. But uh, it will give the appearance the, of, of little tiny evergreen trees million miles away. Well, not quite a million. Okay, so let's get a little bit of a darker blue now. Okay, so I'll just stick the phthalo blue, Prussian blue, tiny bit of white. Okay, so we've added Prussian blue into this and then we can come back up here and put another one of these, another row of these hills. And they live just on a, a, fan, a fan brush. All you've got to do is just set them free. You need this misty area between and as well. That separates the, uh, the colours. Blend that out to nothing. There we go. A bit more on here. Follow that up there like so. I mean, you could have endless amounts of these. You could have uh, one starting that way, one starting that way. You, the, the creativity is endless. It's absolutely endless. Okay. There we go. How easy was that? Just lift up slightly. Create the little illusion of trees. It must go straight up though. If you take them to the one side, it looks like uh, there's been a big eruption, a volcanic eruption, and it's blown them all over. And we don't want that. Okay, getting back into this. Just blend the base of this out. Really get tough. Now you notice I'm tapping. I'm not pulling, I'm not pushing paint. I'm just tapping. I'm just tapping. And, that. and then we can blend out. With that. Now we can blend that away. There we go. There we go. Right, now we need to know where, where our water is. So, again, grab some of this colour. And I'm just going to start here. I'm just going to pull down a little bit. Pull straight down. Just like that. Okay, and again on this side. There. Straight down. Okay. Now... Clean the brush. Again, hold this thinner. Shake off the excess. Beat the brush up. Okay, and then just gently go across all this. Just gently. Just to bring all that together. There, look at that. Instant, instant reflections. Okay. Now we can come in with a palette knife. And we can take a bit of white paint. This is liquid white. And I'm going to put that there. I'm going to mix it with a bit of titanium white. And I'm just going to work in there. I'm going to start at that point there. And I'm just going to work in. Now this is going to be like a snowy bank or the water line, whatever. Just there. I'm just going to cut that in. Now if these look too bright, and sometimes I have to make them too bright just for the videos but if this looks too bright all you do is just keep rubbing it with a dry knife watch to see if you can do that and it thins it out and it goes away yeah, just like that okay now we're coming around a corner you know coming towards us but we don't want to go like that okay what we need to do is keep the knife perfectly flat parallel to the base of the canvas Odd one or two here and there, there and here, there we go. We've got a nice icy bank. There, like that. Okay, now, now, let's work on the foreground. So we've done the sky, we've done the middle ground. Let's do the foreground. 
So what I'm going to do is going to take the rounded brush, okay, same mounting colour, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of sap green to that, okay, that mountain background colour. Okay, I'm just going to tap this in, just like so, I'm just going to start at one corner, now you could do this with a one inch brush, two inch, you could do this with a fan brush, you could even do this with a palette knife, you know. It doesn't really make any difference. Not one bit. Just pop in some dark colour there. Like I said, we're going to have some trees, I think, either side, just to case it all in. Make a good composition. Just like that. Down here, we're not too bothered. Like that. Good practice, though. Good practice. Another tip that I... Uh, that I'll give you, if you get some paint on your easel, on your easel bars like I do, after you finish painting, give those a wipe, because if you're like me, you paint one after the other after the other, you may end up picking some of this colour up in your painting, and if, if, if you know, sometimes that can be a bit, a bit chaotic, not disastrous, but chaotic at times, especially when the colours don't go together, like green snow and things like that. <laughs> okay, there we go. Right, now we've got that brush, I'm just going to wipe off the excess, swill it out, beat it up, because we'll use this to do some highlights down here. But we'll do some trees, I think, first. So with that, with that, you can hear some creaking, that's my shoes, I've got some leather shoes on. <laughs> uh, let me find a fan brush, that's the right size. Will this one do? Maybe not. This one will do. This one will do. Okay, so tiny bit of paint thinner. All right, same colour. So we've got black, we've got green, we've got blue. And I've used some paint thinner just to thin it down somewhat, just to, to make it more pliable up here. And I think we add, I think we add some evergreens. So all we need to do, load lots of paint onto the paintbrush. And then we work, we just put a guideline in, and then we start with the corner and tap and just go side to side like this. Side to side. Now, again, if you're familiar with the equipment, you can use any kind of paintbrush to do this. But I find fan brushes, especially a nice number three, I think it is works quite well. Down here we're not too fussed about. I think we had two on the other side, so we'll go up there. So again, it's just black, it's just green, it's just blue. We'll put one there, make a commitment, and start to work. Side to side, apply more pressure. Keep loading your paintbrush if you need to spin the paintbrush around. Now what you will find is your paintbrush will work better one way than it will another and I don't know why that is. I think I think that's when you're utilizing your tools a little bit but then uh, they become used to to you as an individual. Yeah so my paint brushes work better one way than they do the other. Bizarro yeah all right, so now just come down there like so, apply more pressure. We're not too fussed down here, we'll separate that with highlights. So now we're getting a good composition. What I'm going to do is just wash most of that paint off the paintbrush. Because we'll use that dark colour to give us a lighter, a lighter green colour. But let's work on some bushes down here first. So let's take some yellow, so I'm just going to separate that yellow and the reason why I do this, if I take some mucky colour into that yellow, when I use it next time it's going to be all tainted with greens and uh, and, uh, and blues, so a bit of yellow there, tiny bit, Prussian blue, phthalo blue, sap green, okay, so we've got a multitude of colours there, okay, just like that. And we can add yellow ochre to this, so we'll grab some of that as well. We'll put a lump of yellow ochre there, maybe even a touch of red. 
and then every now and again we'll just mix all that lot up on the paintbrush. Now watch, so we take the paintbrush and we start to tap all this together. Tap all this together. Now just look at the colours that are in that paintbrush. I don't know if you can see, but look at the different colours that are in there. You would work forever trying to get that, you know, done on a, an old conventional way. Okay, so let's go up here and let's start picking out individual. I think they were dark green on the, the original one. So individual little lumps and bumps. Just like that. And if it's not sticking, add a tiny bit of either liquid white or paint thinner or liquid clear. There we go. Seems to be going all right. Just like that. We'll work up here. Remember, these are going to be in shadow, or most of this is going to be in shadow, so we don't want too much. I know it looks like I'm hitting at random, but I'm actually thinking about different different bushes as I'm painting this. So again up there. Yeah. Just tap downwards. Vary the flavour. My kids think I'm funny when I say vary the flavour, but it is, it's varying the flavour of the paint, isn't it? There we go, so we've got some reds in there, we've got some blues, we've got some greens, we've got some yellows. It is a tapestry, it really is. There we go, a bit more yellow on that one I think. Seeing as it's in the middle, maybe a bit more on there. Like that. Sometimes you start to see things. I know we had a rough idea what we were gonna do today, but sometimes you start to see things and it kind of works. It kind of works for you. Okay, so let's mix up. Now, evergreens aren't usually very dark, a very light green. They're usually kind of a dark green. So again, we'll just use that yellow, that brown, a bit of sap green mixed in there, a bit of red. Okay, just like that. Now, I'm going to take a bit of brown, so I'm going to take some, this is burnt sienna, and just right in the middle, just a bit of burnt sienna intermittently thrown in. Now you won't see the full trunk, but some parts you might do. And then that, same on this one, there like that. And there, and there, and there, and there, and there, just like so. Get crazy with it. Okay, let's start putting some highlights on this. So take that fan brush. Okay, it's got some of that dark colour on, but not much. And we're going to some of this green colour now. We're going to need to know, you already do know, but where those highlights are going to come from. Mountain suggests that they come from this side, so you need to put the highlights on this side as well. Okay, so again, start off at the top. And all you need to do is just highlight. On the highlight side just like that do a couple back here but not many not many at all there down here one or two like that okay same on this side get the top and again we'll do the highlight side now we've got to decide which one of these two trees is in, in the foreground I think this one's in the foreground this this one here, so we'll work on him. Uh, we'll do this one. So again, just touch the top, get to the highlight side. There we go. A bit more down here, like that. And back to the tree that's in the foreground. Yeah. So, like I think I said before in my very first painting video, um, I try and do things in threes. Doesn't always happen though. People have noticed that. Uh, I've snuck four trees in every now and again, or I've, I've, uh, uh, I've had like four clouds or something like that. But um, yeah, I try, I try and stick to, to basically groups of three. It works better on the eye, you see. There we go. All I'm doing is just putting some, uh, some little, 
the little leafy things. It's just a bit of yellow paint straight off the brush. Okay. There. And I'm guiding them in this way and I'm guiding them in this way so it'll focus your eye into the center of the painting. And you won't even know that's happening, but it, it'll do that. There, like so. Get down here. You can put stones and all sorts in there as well. So what I want you to do, guys, is obviously join me on my new channel, Master, you know, Painting with Master Temple or whatever we've started to call it. You'll know what it's called anyway. Um, join me on that. I, uh, I want to wish you all the very best for the new year. Uh, I really do hope you have a fantastic new year and let's have a, a prosperous one and a good one. You know, we're about due some good luck, aren't we? We're about due some very good luck. I'm going to sign this one here, okay? Just down here. Tiny bit of crimson and red. Just there, like that. Okay, yeah, please join me in that new channel. Have a very good new year, you know. Um, I hope you had an amazing Christmas. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, this means a lot to me to paint for you guys, and it's been so, so pleasurable reading all your comments and, and replying to you all, meeting some of you guys as well, writing to you. It's, it's just an amazing feeling. And uh, But I hope you understand why we're doing what we're doing because um, you know I think stuff like this deserves its own entity. It doesn't need to be lost in the con, you know, the confusion of Master Temple treasures because that can be quite confusing at times. It needs its own entity. But yeah, so for the very last time, on the Temple Treasures channel, you know, take care of the Sen, stay safe, happy painting, happy days.